Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about Nick Bosa, the edge rusher out of Ohio State, in terms of his production analytics. Now, this is a video that I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from, uh, concern, uh, just watch the tape, all that kind of stuff. L listen, guys. I, I just don't care. So if you're going to put a just watch the tape comment, do it. But if you can't understand what the data is conveying in terms of the concerns, in terms of the overall thing, because again, this data doesn't say that Nick Bosa is not a talented football player. What this data says is that there is concern with Nick Bosa and that you have to get to the bottom of this. I mean, you're, you're going to give this guy millions of dollars to play football for you. And if you can't figure out why his data is the way it is, uh, then you have problems. And if you can't overcome what those problems are. Um, so bottom line is, I'm just getting you guys prepared. If you're, if you're someone who loves Nick Bosa, this data is not gonna help you out. Don't hate me, hate the data. Don't shoot the messenger, shoot the data. <laughs> but uh, bottom line is, I am gonna get into what the data kind of conveys with Nick Bosa um, and just give you a, a general sense of what the concerns are for a guy like him. And, and he's a player that many people consider to be a top five player, a guy who's going to be drafted either number one overall or in the top five or top ten. So a guy like that shouldn't be putting up data like this. So we're going to get into all those types of things, um, at least in terms of production data. So if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So starting off, this is Nick Bosa's production data. Um, he had a 16.72 solo tackle score, a 44.98 sack score, and a 52.03 tackle for loss score. When it comes to the all-pro threshold, doesn't quite hit any of the all-pro thresholds at the position, uh, doesn't hit any of the Pro Bowl thresholds at the position, doesn't go anywhere near the all-pro averages or Pro Bowl averages, and just to put up Joey Bosa's data, because again, this is the guy that, I mean, the only reason why Nick Bosa gets talked about a ton is because of Joey Bosa, obviously. It's not the only reason, you know, plays at Ohio State, but still. Joey Bosa, better in terms of solo tackle data, better in terms of sack data, and better in terms of TFL data. Compared to all the other kind of star players that are on the list. So, now you might be saying, okay, there's reasons for this, and, and there definitely are. You know, he was injured. Um, there's all these other sort of factors. But I think that that's really what this data speaks to, is the fact that, one, he wasn't able to make a mark to kind of take that position. Because I get this argument a lot where people say a player played at a high, like a high-impact school like Alabama or LSU or whatever, and uh, they were they were rotating, and they they were really good. But there was these other players that were really good too. The problem with that argument is I've never seen a case in the data for that argument to be made. Meaning, since 1999, or at least in terms of edge rusher data, since 1989. I mean, that's how far the edge rush data goes. You know, it goes all the way back to uh, Derek Thomas. Since that time, there's, there's never been an edge rusher who became an All-Pro or Pro Bowl player and played with an All-Pro and Pro Bowl player too, if that makes any sense. So, I mean, maybe not a Pro Bowl player. There have been definitely some cases of a, of a edge rusher on a team that played with another Pro Bowl player, but both of those players had one season where they put in amazing production points. Bosa, my issue with Bosa or Nick Bosa in general with that argument is you're not looking at the facts. The fact is all pro and pro Bowl players produce at this level, regardless of where they play. Even Joey Bosa played at Ohio State, a very competitive program, and stuck out based on his overall data, based on his production data. Stuck out tremendously um, and played at Ohio State. So we can make excuses for a guy but those excuses have to have some merit. There has to be some guy out there that was not productive at his college 
uh, and and ended up becoming a elite NFL player. And there just isn't that many cases like that, um, especially cases where solo tackle data is so low. Because Joey, I mean, I, honestly, I would say Nick Bosa's issue is not necessarily his sack and TFL data as much as his solo tackle data. Because uh, you know, solo tackle data is much more important. Um, I can point to guys like Cameron Wake or Clay Matthews, guys that had 60 percentile solo tackle data, didn't have the best sack in TFL data, and went on to become obviously Clay Matthews and, uh, and, and Cameron Wake. Nick Bosa, there's never been an all pro Bowl player with as low of a solo tackle score as him, um, which again speaks to concerns. You know? And I think a lot of this does illuminate the injury history with him. Uh, I'm not saying he's injury prone at all, but this is a guy that you know tore his ACL in high school. Um, this is a guy that, that as soon as he got a featured role at Ohio State this season, couldn't finish out the season healthy uh, because of you know core injury. Um, so again, not talking about him as his, not talking about his work ethic or any of these other sort of issues. I mean, I don't know his work ethic. I'm not bringing that up at all, but. This is a guy that just can't seem to, one, get a starting role and be so good that you don't want to rotate players with him. Because, again, if you have Von Miller, why do you want to rotate Von Miller? You know, if you have Joey Bosa, why would you want to rotate anybody with Joey Bosa? I mean, I don't care what program you have. If you have someone who is truly an elite player, a player that can wreck worlds and destroy things, why would you want to rotate him with anybody else except for giving him a breather? So, again, that argument just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, I think when it comes to Nick Bosa, I've seen his film. He is very athletic. You know, has, has you know, again, his traits are, are very, you know, again, he has classic sort of pass rusher traits. But I think his production data is really speaking more towards his injury history. And, uh... Injuries are obviously something that you can't really predict 100%, but I do think you have to understand that with the Nick Bosa, if you take him in the top 10, you're taking a guy where there's never been an all-pro player, never been a Pro Bowl player with his solo tackle data, at least, and you're also taking the risk that this is an inexperienced player because he hasn't been a starter that much. He hasn't started that many games, and... There's the injury factor as well. So bottom line is when it comes to Nick Bosa, I'm not saying he's not talented. I'm not saying he doesn't have a chance to become an NFL starter. But what I am saying is, in terms of top 10 consideration in the NFL draft, I think there are too many warning signs based on his production data to warrant a selection like that. Um, because I think regardless of bloodlines and all these other sort of factors, I think when it comes to Nick Bosa, I just... This is a guy who just looks like a guy where NFL stardom, if you will, is something that just may not be there based on how he got to where he is right now. Um, things can change. He could become an outlier. Anything can happen, obviously. It's the NFL. It's the draft. But you do have to take into account the issues that are presented today um, because they are serious and legitimate issues that have more concrete facts behind them than what film analysts would say in terms of my concerns. Um, so again, of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at giraffecoburn at wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Uh, hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.